Hi friends, welcome to Time Python series. In this video, we're going to talk about how to send automated emails with Python along with attachments. And if you are using Gmail, I will also demonstrate how to use the app passwords feature of Gmail so that you don't need to sacrifice your Gmail security by disabling two-factor authentication. So what are the use cases of sending automated emails in Python? Well, there can be many use cases like sending automated reports, alerts, notifications, etc. All right, let's talk about implementation. How can we actually implement automated emails in Python? Well, we can use the SMTP lib Python library which ships along with Python. And I have given you the source code where you can have a function called send email and by sending the parameters to this function, you can actually send an email. So let's get started with coding and try to break down this code. So I'm going to take a blank folder. I'm going to open this folder with VS code. I'm going to create a new file and I'll name it index.py. You can name it anything. In order to demonstrate the attachments feature, I will keep some two images in this folder so that we can attach them with our email. So here you can see I have kept the two images in the same folder as the Python script. I will use these images to send as attachments with our email in our example. All right, this is the source code which we are going to use to send an email. So let's break down this source code. First, I have did all the required imports from the SMTP lib and email modules. You don't need to do separately pip install SMTP lib and email because they already ship with Python. You can see these are the mail server parameters which we are going to use to send automated emails. So let's try to see what these parameters are. SMTP host is the host address or the URL or the IP address of the mail server from which you are going to send the email. If you are using Gmail, this is smtp.gmail.com. If you are using a corporate exchange server, then you have to write the IP address or the URL of your exchange server. And this is the SMTP port on which the mail server is listening for API requests. And this is the mail username and this is the mail password. And this is the mail address from which you are going to send the email. These are the parameters of the email. Here you can see this is the mail subject. It's just a string. This is the mail content HTML. That means this is the HTML content of the mail body. This is the mail body, but I am writing it in HTML so that I can send rich text as mail. So here you can see I have written BR and here I am writing bold markup just like HTML so that I can add more styling features to my mail content. You can even use plain text because plain text is also a valid HTML. If you don't want to write HTML, just write plain text. It will be okay. And this is the recipient's mail list array. So if you want to send mail to 10 people, no problem. Just create an array of 10 email addresses and you can send mail to 10 people at the same time. And this is the list of attachment file paths. So here you can see I've got smtp.png, poster.png and I have these two files in my folder. You can also give absolute file paths like c users smtp.png or d poster.png something like that you can even give absolute file system paths here to send attachments. All right these are the mail server parameters and the mail contents. Now let's see the function which actually sends the mail. So all these parameters can be given as input to this function which I have created here. So let's see how this function uses these parameters to send the email. The first thing we are doing here is creating a message object. So a message object we are creating is a my multipart object here and then we are setting attributes to that. You can see from attribute we are setting the email address from which we are sending the email and then to attribute we are setting as a comma separated list of the recipient mail addresses and subject attribute we are setting the mail subject string and we are attaching the mail body as a mime text here you can see message dot attach mime text mail content html string and you're saying that it's a html and you can even send text also just like here i have commented this if you don't want to use html you can write mime text mail content text it's plain but if you want to send text also you can send it as html so no issues there and the next thing is we are inserting attachments to the message object so here you can see i have created a for loop and i am iterating through each attachment file path and i am creating an attachment object so so attachment object is a mime base object and I'm setting the payload by reading the file path and then I'm encoding the file path contents as a base 64 string and then I'm also adding a header to the attachment object that it's an attachment with file name the same as the file path file name and then I'm attaching the attachment object to the message object. So in these two sections we have created the message object with all the input parameters we have passed to the function and then this section deals with sending the message object via email. So here you can see we are creating a SMTP session by using the SMTP lib.smtp function. Here we are giving the SMTP host address, SMTP port and then we have created a session and using session we are telling start TTLS that means we are securing the session and we are logging in the session with the username and password and then we are setting the message text 
and sending the email using the from address to address and the message content and after we send the email we are quitting the session using the s.quit function and while sending the message if you have any errors it will be set as key value pairs in the send errors object that means if you have any key values in the send errors object that means you had errors while sending the email so that's why we can optionally handle errors also so here i have created a simple implementation of error handling like I am checking if there are any keys in this object called send errors. If there are any keys, then I am raising an exception that I got an error while sending email. You can implement your own error handling mechanism. This is a simple error handling mechanism which I have implemented in my code. And finally, after defining this function, I am using this function and sending in all my parameters to this function. So this is how this send email function works. The best part about this send email function is that you can just copy paste this function in your source code and just use this function without understanding how this code works. So if you want to use this in your code, just copy paste this function in your Python code and just call that function. That's it. You can easily send emails in your Python source code. All right. Let's try to do some practical example. In this practical example, I will use my Gmail account. But by default, in many of the Gmail accounts, we have two-factor authentication enabled. That means you can't send automated emails using your original Gmail password. So how do we solve this problem? Generally, people disable two-factor authentication and allow less secure apps feature in their Gmail account, which obviously degrades the security of your Gmail. So Gmail, what they did was they kept a feature called app passwords and using that features, you can create a new password for sending automated emails and use that in your Python scripts without compromising your original passwords. So let me try to give a demo of that app passwords feature in Gmail. So this is my Google account and here I will go to accounts.google.com or else you can just directly click on this account menu. So go to accounts.google.com and here you can see your account settings and there you click on this security tab and in that security tab in the signing into Google section you can see I have two step verification turned on and I have a feature called app passwords. Remember that if you don't have two step verification turned on, you can't get this app passwords feature. So first turn on your two step verification feature and then you'll get the app password feature. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click this app passwords. Now I'm in the app password screen. Now I can generate an app password for sending automated emails. So first I'll select the app as mail, select the device as Windows computer and then generate a password. So now I got a password which I can use in my Python code without compromising my original password. I'll just copy this and click done. Now you can't access your password. So always be sure that before clicking the done button, you have to copy the password. So now I will paste that password in this mail password variable. Now I'll change the mail username. Obviously this is not the username which I'm using. I'll just change the username now. I'll just replace with my username. And I will also change the recipient email address to a valid email address. All right, we are now ready to send emails through Gmail using our app passwords. I've just changed the mail username from email and the recipient emails. And I've used the mail password as the app password, which I've set in this accounts.google.com app password section. So let's try to run this code. I'll just run this code. And here I got execution complete without any errors. So let's try to see if I've sent email in my Google account. I'll just go to Gmail. And here you can see in the sent mail section, I have sent the mail using my Python script. Here you can see, hi, hope you're fine. This is a test email from Python script using an ISOM library called SMTP lib. And these are the two attachments which we are talking about in our code. Here you can see these are the two attachments and we have successfully attached these two attachments in our mail. And you can even see the mail subject and body here. The mail subject in our code was test subject and you can see the test subject as a mail subject here. And the mail body was, hi, hope you're fine. And I've given a new line as BR and that's why a new line has started. And then I've created a bold markup around this test word. And that's why the test word is bold here, you can see. And the same way I've kept SMTP lib bold in our markup and that's why SMTP lib is bold. You can even add hyperlinks in your mail body. You can even see the mail is received in the inbox of the recipient email. You can see it's from the address we have sent from our Python script. And these are the contents. You can see the two attachments and the mail body, same as that we have seen the sent mail. So what we did was quite powerful without compromising the security of Google. So we have used the app passwords feature of Google to create a password exclusively for our Python script. And we have not leaked our original Gmail password. So I insist on using the Google's app password feature so that you can securely send emails using your Google account. Don't try to use the password which I have shown in the example. 
obviously i'm going to delete this password now so the password will be useless if you try to use in your example now create your own app passwords in your examples so that's it guys using very less lines of code you can send automated emails from python very easily and this feature is really powerful you can see i've created a blog post on sending automated emails with attachments in python i have even given the source code so that you can copy paste and use the source code in your own projects i have also given you the steps on how to generate app passwords in gmail along with images i have also given you references so that you can do further reading hope you like this video guys thank you for watching